Hello there, uh, my name's Dean. I'm from Housebox in uh, Glastonbury, Somerset. And welcome to our latest restoration conversion of uh, Mercedes 814 Horsebox. Uh, this is Helga. Helga came to us uh, very differently from how she looks now. We completely stripped all of the timber off of her, uh, planed it all down to make it like new again, uh, scraped all of the paint off of all the frame and repainted it, did a few customizations and then built it up again from scratch uh, to become what could be a comfortable full-time home for the people that we built it for. As well as the restoration, we also added a little bit of headroom on the Luton area, which is where the bed would go. And we've uh, put new wheel arches on, some custom made wheel arches on the front of the cab. Cab's also been completely repainted. And uh, underneath, we've also got all the extra carriages for certain utilities and ways of powering the habitation bits inside. Uh, for instance, to begin with, over here, uh, we have the domestic gas refill point. The only non-renewable that we use in the conversions is LPG. Uh, that's because in a vehicle this size, it's not particularly practical to be able to hold all the batteries and solar panels that you would require to use uh, appliances that use heat. So for, for those, which would include the cooking facilities, the water boiler and the fridge, we use LPG gas. Um, rather than lugging bottles around, on Helga we've made a custom underslung tank. This tank can be refilled at any petrol station that has the facilities to uh, refill LPG for LPG vehicles. Only this isn't used for propulsion, it's just used for uh, the habitation parts. Um, a bit further up, we've just added a little bit of extra storage space here. There's a little external locker so they can keep anything dirty they may not want inside the vehicle in there. And on the side of, it, of the little box here, there's also the mains hookup point and also a RCD fused incomer just to protect against any dodgy cables that you might find on particular campsites. Going further up the truck, uh, you can obviously see the windows and some of the vents. Um, these have been powder coated to uh, colour closely resembling copper as we could find, which is RAL 2013. Um, we were going to copper plate them, but there were a few complications involved with uh, the aluminium base material. Here we have the action zone, we have the cab, which is uh, where obviously all the driving will be taking place from. As I said before, it's a Mercedes 814 horse box. Even though it's uh, relatively old by most people's standards, I think it's 1989 or similar, it's actually probably the most modern horse box we've done a full conversion on. Uh, so it's actually really quite easy to drive around, even now it's got all the additional weight on it. Um, so yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to drive. Uh, further around this side, we've got a few more facilities. We've got these little steps that stow away just so they can get easy access into the, into the main box area. If they're on the road and need to get anything out, they stow away nicely like that. Um, because the guy's power requirements might be quite high at particular times, so they're not left without power. Uh, in this vehicle, for the first time, we've incorporated an LPG powered generator, which comes out on these runners. Uh, it's powered by the gas that's provided by the underslung tank on the other side that we've already seen. And this means if their batteries run a little bit low, they can just start this one up and they can have off-grid power anywhere they please. Further on the back, past the back wheels, we have the water tank. This tank will hold 140 litres of fresh water for, for washing in the shower or for washing up your plates or just to drink. It's a pure black polypropylene tank, so it doesn't let any daylight into it, which can cause algae growth and uh, in turn create diseases like Legionnaires or something horrible like that. The tank itself is also insulated uh, against the cold and it's got baffles inside. So if you travel with water on board, it's not flying around too much to make you unsteady when you're on the road. Uh, here we are on the, the rear porch area of Helga. The deck that was stood on uh, used to be the ramp, which would go all the way to the floor to enable the horses to get in and access. Uh, we're not planning on getting any horses on it now, so we've put some adjustable legs on it so that it can create a nice stable platform for people to enjoy either the sun or the rain. Uh, we've got this canvas awning above us, uh, which is completely custom and enables someone just to sit out here and enjoy the extra space. Also on the back porch, we've got these two lanterns uh, for a little bit of light. Uh, again, LED bulbs as everything is in the truck. They're hung off the wall with these custom made brackets. These little hangers here are actually off an old piano, uh, the, the legs for that. And these units just unscrew simply here and lift off for when the ramp needs to come up and it needs to be transported from anywhere you want to go in the world. Um, let's have a look inside.
and welcome to Helga's Insides. Um, as you can see, it's still quite a big space with a, a lot of free room for movement. Uh, it doesn't feel too cramped, which is always a bonus. Uh, when you start putting the sort of cladding up on the inside and you've got a complete but empty box, it obviously feels really massive. But uh, as time goes on, you assume as you add elements to it um, that it's going to really infringe on the space and the risk is it may feel quite cramped. But in this one, through clever design and the fact the box has already got quite a large footprint, uh, we actually end up with quite a lot of free space, so it doesn't feel enclosed or cramped at all. Um, here, first things first, we've got the kitchen, uh, which has got all the more cons you'd expect in a normal bricks and mortar home kitchen. Uh, so we've got the cooking facilities here, there's a, a two ring hob which runs off LPG, uh, which comes from the tank underneath that we've already seen. Uh, the only non-renewable source that we use for powering anything in the truck is LPG gas, uh, which obviously does the cooking. There's also a full oven grill uh, down here, uh, which we put a custom front on to match it in with the rest of the kitchen uh, more tastefully. And down here we have a fridge, a fridge freezer unit, uh, which will do all, all their sort of cooling needs for keeping food fresh. A bit further up, we've got a small Belfast sink, which is a, it's a really nice size. It's not too big and heavy that it infringes on too much of the kitchen. And being a, if it was a full Belfast sink, you might uh, have to use a bit too much water uh, to fill, fill it up, but you can get full plates and pans in there, which is nice. And there's also the tap here, uh, which is a mixer tap, uh, homemade. The uh, design was chosen by Simon and Gemma, uh, and we sort of recreated that and used a few chemical processes to give it a nice sort of aged finish. Underneath the sort of sink area, in the cupboards down here, um, we have two water filters and the uh, water pump. The water pump is a Jabsco Parmax 4, uh, which is a high pressure one, so it'll work well with the, the boiler that we have. Um, I always use Jabsco pumps. I, I think they're really uh, sort of robust and hard wearing and I've installed loads now and I've never had to replace any, which is nice. Uh, the water filter is just an extra feature. There's a 10 micron sediment filter and a five micron charcoal filter. And that just helps ensure that all the water that's coming through is, is super safe and nice and uh, tasty to drink. All the cupboards have got uh, push switch sensitive lighting. So even on sort of dark winter nights, when you open them up, these little switches will automatically put on a nice LED strip that runs down there so you can see everything you've got in the cupboards. So there's no fumbling around looking for spices that you're not sure that you have or not. So moving on up further out the kitchen, uh, we've got the, the gas manifold taps here. These isolate the different LPG appliances within the truck. Um, we like to keep those visible rather than hiding them away just to remind people that they should turn things off when they're not in use. Um, we also have different plugs, sockets and switches here uh, these were quite heavily chemically processed. Uh, they did used to be antique polished brass when we got them. Uh, to create an aged and interesting patina on them, we stripped off the electronics on the back. We polished the face plates until the, uh, the original lacquer came off and the first layer of the brass coating uh, to reveal the copper, um, which is a layer that normally comes under brass when you're electroplating. And then we then boiled them in ammonium chloride solution, which is really good for oxidizing copper, and then lacquered them, cleaned them up, and put the units back in. So it's quite, a, quite an intensive process that they go through, but we're really happy with the result, uh, so we think it's well worth the effort. Uh, down here in this area, this is where they're probably going to have a television, so we've got an, an aerial socket point with a nice aerial on the roof. Um, and also an audio input point, which means that they, if they're watching a film or something, they can have uh, the effect of a surround sound system by plugging that in straight through there. So moving on over here, this is the, the seating, main seating area. Um, there's also some steps incorporated to make access up to the bed area really easy. Under this part of the seating, there's another two large drawers, which are great for storage, clothes, anything you may need. As well as that, under here, there's hidden storage. Two large box containers. In the, the floor here, there's a base for a table leg. There is a, a really large table which can sit here and that can seat four, maybe five people around on the benches. Uh, there's also an additional bench with detachable legs which can get stowed in the drawer. Uh, so another two people can sit this side of it. And then at night, the, the table itself as well has uh, detachable legs so that this whole area will uh, change into a small double bed which is perfect for two sort of younger people to sleep in for the night. At the end of the uh, box seating area, uh, we've incorporated a nice staircase to go up 
so you can have a real comfortable transition from getting to from having a glass of wine on the veranda to getting into bed uh, without too much trouble and it's all designed to wrap nicely around this this lovely piece of hawthorn um, it's a whole hawthorn tree that's quite unusually large and we've been sat on that bit of timber for about three years waiting for something to do with it uh, and the opportunity arose on this truck to finally use it which is really really nice but it's a really special piece of wood uh, and yeah it's been a pleasure to be able to put it in in this build. The stairs also afford us uh, extra space for storage so nothing goes to waste on a build like this every inch of space has to be utilised um, uh, so everyone is a full length drawer that goes all the way to the back uh, which is perfect for storing. In this one, we've got the, the leg for the table and uh, the main bit of timber that acts as the bench seat, uh, but you can obviously stow anything that you need to away in these spaces. Also built into the edge of the, the stairs is a little control panel for controlling the audio system uh, in Helga. Um, this one is uh, particularly interesting. So we've made a, a custom copper control panel and there's isolator switches for the subwoofer amp and the main amplifier which both live uh, beneath the seating area here. The subwoofer speaker which has got a, a vintage grill on it and some vintage textured cloth which came all the way from America uh, is, is just situated in here and gives a real deep good subby, subby womp to whatever you're listening to. Uh, and then there's two different sets of speakers that are recessed into the ceiling and each respectively have their own uh, covers to make it look you know, a bit more in keeping with, with the rest of the theme of the truck. Uh, so there's two speakers with one volume control in the main area and then there's another two up in the bed. So if you've got kids sleeping away somewhere you can not wake them up when you're watching your films. So up here we have the uh, this main sleeping area. It's big enough for a large double mattress so people can sleep really comfortably. Um, one of the main alterations we made to the outside of the box is just to raise the headroom up in this area so that you don't feel cramped or like you're sleeping in a coffin or anything horrible. Um, we've had to engineer it because this vehicle has a tilting cab uh, so that this whole bed area is an insulated aluminium frame that all folds back onto itself and then this front area actually flips up so that if you do need to access the engine of the vehicle you're not stopped from doing so in any way. Um, as well as that and in the rest of the truck we've got these curtain rails here which are just 22 millimeter copper piping which again we treated with ammonium chloride to give them a verdigris patina and then oiled them and they're all held on with sort of raw iron uh, fixings. Also in the roof uh, as well as these uh, three windows at the front we're afforded loads of natural light by these two deck hatches which are Houdini 500 hatches which you uh, typically find on a narrow boat um, and they're really great because as well as uh, allowing a load of natural light into the space and making this bed area feel a lot larger. They also allow secure access to the roof area and the roof rack, which means you don't have to have a ladder on the outside of the truck, so that helps keep it a little bit more secure. Um, also in the bed area, as mentioned before, we've got the two speaker units, um, some bedside lights with their own switches and some uh, main socket points with USB chargers so people can charge their phones and devices at night whilst they sleep. over here we have the heart of the truck uh, the wood burning stove which is a must in for me in any vehicle conversion so it's been a really lovely source of heat and keeping things dry it also helps prevent damp uh, and other things that you really need to keep out of a truck um, this stove in particular is from a company in Newton Abbott called uh, Salamander Stoves it's an absolutely lovely unit it's the first one of these we've installed and it works really really well um, it is quite a heavy unit so it may not be recommended for smaller vehicles but in something like this where you've got the extra payload available it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a really lovely unit to install. It's got a natural slate hearth uh, which we've shaped to make look a little bit more rugged than it was when it came from the yard uh, and it's also bolted down through all the way through the chassis which keeps it secure when it's in motion. The heat shield around it is all steel checker plate uh, which again we treated to make look a little bit different or a little bit more interesting so we stripped off the mill scale with brick acid and then steam cleaned at 130 degrees to remove all of that. Uh, we then heated it with a blowtorch and added iron nitrate solution about three or four times over to create this nice rust patina. Uh, we then rinse it off so that it doesn't rust any further and give a coat of protective oil to finish it off. It's a single flue, uh, single skin flue going all the way up to about half, of, about a foot from the roof, at which point we always go to a twin wall flue. Uh, even though twin wall flue isn't the cheapest, it's really essential for ensuring a safe install and also getting the maximum draw off of the stove. So this is the main wardrobe area uh, in Helga, the vehicle. In this cupboard here, she has a sliding coat rail 
so that they can store any clothes that they'd like to keep hung up. Um, but as well as that, this also houses the, the main sort of electrical interfaces and the important components that help Helga to work as a functional full-time living space. Um, on here we have some analog dials which help the end user to manage the off-grid systems that we've installed. Uh, they can give a quick indication of the voltage being generated by the solar panel, the level of water in the tank, uh, the battery voltage and the amount of 12 volt load that's being used at any one time. Um, most of that information in fairness is already relayed on the solar charge controller in here but it, we think it's a nice feature to have these and it also makes uh, monitoring them really easy. Uh, inside this cupboard itself is the guts of the electrical system. So we've the Outback FM60 charge controller, which is an expensive but highly efficient unit. We always install these wherever we can. I've never had any issues with them whatsoever. Um, that has an auxiliary setting on a uh, 12 volt relay, so that it's a low voltage disconnect. So if the battery voltage runs too low, it shuts off the power going to the 12 volt stuff to enable them to not damage the batteries and know that it's time to charge. There's also all the fusing for the 12 volt side of things. Uh, there's a consumer unit for the main socket and the remote switch for their inverter charge their inverter charger. Um, also, there's an input selector switch because they've got the onboard generator and the mains hook up. It allows them to choose which source of power generation they're going to use for charging without the risk of uh, adding an extra phase and having a dangerous crossover in the system. And then, in the foot of the wardrobe itself, is the is the inverter charger that we mentioned before. Again, it's quite a sophisticated unit. It's the Sterling Pro Combi S2500, um, which is a pure sine wave inverter, which means that it reproduces the AC sine wave of the mains electrics absolutely perfectly. Uh, and it means it won't damage any sensitive equipment they may have plugged in. And they can technically run up to two and a half thousand watts uh, off of anything from that. So under this trap door at the back of the truck, just over the, the uh, back axle and in the middle to distribute weight evenly is probably the heaviest thing that we've put into the conversion, which is the batteries. They're wet lead acid, so you need to access the top periodically to make sure they're topped up with deionized water. Um, the batteries in question are Rolls 5000 series. There's two six volt batteries wired in series to create a 12 volt battery and the uh, capacity of those is at C20, which means if you discharge and charge over 20 hours, um, is 770 amp hour. So that should be more than enough to power anything that they need to, to generate in the truck. So this is Helga's bathroom uh, with a fully functional composting toilet and uh, a really nice shower. Uh, the wall structure of this is actually clad in an old shipping case from a, quite a famous old sculpture that's been all over the world. So this timber has been to Korea, Australia, Brazil, all over the globe. And it's nice now that rather than just being waste, it's gonna do even more traveling uh, in Helga. And the uprights are made from some, I think it's older that we copied from the Somerset levels. Uh, it's a really good hardwood. It goes this lovely red color as soon as the bark's stripped off of it. And uh, it's also incredibly strong. So it produ uh, produces a really, really sound structure for containing the bathroom. So the composting toilet itself, the unit is an airhead composting toilet, which I think are made in the States. Um, it's all very decoratively disguised though. They're not the prettiest units on its own. So we've boxed this one in, um, covered it in chemically treated copper, and we've also made a nice ash toilet seat and surround for it. But everything in there is hinged because you need to access the toilet to use the levers and the crank and obviously to empty it as well. The shower itself is got, as you can see, is made from used uh, plumbing components and has a really large copper shower head. The walls are galvanized steel corrugated sheet. Uh, the base itself, Simon and Gemma wanted a polished concrete effect, so we couldn't really go pouring concrete into a truck. So we've used the three part epoxy patching mortar that they use for restorative buildings. There's a roof decking area. As you can see, it's quite large, there's plenty of room. Um, this would normally be filled with solar panels on some builds, but because these guys have got an onboard generator, uh, we decided to have a smaller solar generation. They still get 345 watts out of this lovely LG monocrystalline panel, and all the frame is also hinged independently, so that if they are parked up somewhere for a substantial amount of time, they can direct it towards 30 degrees south, and they can improve their yield by, say, 20 to 30%. Um, the roof rack itself is a, is a steel box frame uh, and the railings are 35 millimetre uh, copper plumbing supplies which we think really suit the aesthetics of the truck. 
uh, and the roof is clad uh, with some Japanese cedar from our friends at Code 6 Timber in Bridgewater. Uh, and it's really, really light and really, really strong timber that should last for ages and provide a really safe deck for them to walk on. As well as a solar panel, there's a, a plug socket up here for mains power, so if they wanted to bring up a sound system, they can. There's also other items like the, the wood burner cow, the, the flue for the boiler. There's a solar vent behind me that's independent of the rest of the electrics to help uh, ventilate the compost toilet, and also a TV aerial and some lashing rings for secure storage. Thanks for watching, subscribe now, and if you like the video, give us a thumbs up.